My name is Judy Herrick and I'm the manager of instructional technology here at Marist College. Um, I'm going to launch our presentation and uh, give you guys the, the beauty of it all. Give me one second. Hi. So hello again. Welcome, everyone. I've introduced myself. We would like to welcome you to the Accessibility, Diversity, and Open Source uh, QA Students Perspective on Learning QA for Accessibility. So there are few open source learning management systems doing quality assurance testing with students. And this year, our cited QA students volunteered for accessibility light testing for Sakai 22, um, which had them do QA testing for the LMS. And although they were not visually impaired, so through the trust built between Sakai, the Sakai community and accessibility light team, the students were able to self-direct, learn to complete the Sakai QA testing all for the upcoming release. This presentation will share the steps we took to onboard uh, individuals for this, from the Sakai QA team to the accessibility light team. It will show the scripts and tools we use for blind low vision users who primarily conduct all their screen uh, testing, um, uh, but it was adapted for stu sighted students to use to perform manual functional verification testing using only the keyboard. And finally, this presentation will share the outcomes of the QA student's perspective on, on this kind of software usability. Allow me to bring on my team. Please speak to this camera. Please forward from here. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um... Uh, I'm Chandrika. I'm an uh, international graduate student majoring in information system management, and I'm from India. Hi, everyone. My name is Ujwala Marigu, and I'm an international graduate student from India. Hello, everyone. I'm Ramna Dibatra. I'm a graduate student. I'm also from India. Hi, everyone. I am Ayapu Naidu, graduate student majoring in business analytics from India. As a digital education student employees, we work 20 hours each week being part of quality assurance testing for the community gave us a wonderful opportunity to expand our expertise by working for the Sakai accessibility team. Marist and Sakai. Marist College has a strong collaboration with open source Sakai project as both an adopting school and as a contributor to the community. When we were told about the prospect of joining the Sakai quality assurance team, to help with the community's ongoing software testing efforts, we were as excited as the dozens of math students who were employees before us. Our introduction to Sakai occurred with the help of knowledge transfer sessions with our previous student employees who helped us to gain knowledge about Sakai and made sure the transition within the team was seamless. During the onboarding process into the digital education team at Marist College, we underwent three months of training during which we understood what our contribution to the Sakai community would include and the benefits we can gain from it. We work with Sakai testing of the learning management system. We call it iLearn. We are responsible for the multiple upgrades we have each year. As a quality assurance testing team, we are an integral part of the open source project since summer 2021. Our team has been a member of the community and I must say this, it has been an incredible journey. The company provides, the community provides us a wonderful platform for gaining the necessary exposure to develop a variety of technical skills in preparation for our future opportunities. Here at Marist College, we as a student employees, the most common work we do is to test the tools of iLearn learning management system in preparation for our upgrades, which occur every summer and winter each year. We also respond to the questions from teaching faculty and students about how to use iLearn. We contribute to the Sakai community through quality assurance testing. QA testing primarily involves three things. One of them is uncovering and reporting software bugs. Bugs are parts of software that are either broken or not working as designed. And the bugs that are part of Sakai are tracked through a Jira instance. A Jira contains information on what the bug is, which tool is being affected, on what versions the bug is present, and steps to be followed for bug testing and verification. After a Jira is created, one of the available developers works on a fix for it. 
once a developer creates a fix to the bug, it is uploaded on the Sakai server, and then it is tested based on the test plan present in the Jira. The testing could result in either a success or a failure. In either case, the tester leaves a comment on the Jira indicating steps followed, what went wrong with testing in case of failure, on what server testing was done, and also browser and op operating system used for testing. And the last of the three is testing regressions. Regressions are features that worked in previous versions of Sakai, but not in the current version. We execute QA testing as various roles of the LMS, like instructor, student, teaching assistants, and admin. In addition to these, QA testing also involves testing new features and creating regression scripts. Regression scripts are step-by-step -step instructions for performing regression tests on alpha, beta, and release candidate versions before the software is production ready. We attend meetings to bring our concerns related to testing to the forefront of other testers and developers, as well as to be informed of the plan related to future Sakai QA testing. We also had an opportunity to be part of Sakai groups, such as Sakai QA planning, Sakai QA test phase, Sakai learning and training, through which we got to interact with people globally. Together, we contribute to the community testing by creating Jira's, verifying Jira's that are resolved, and regression testing as part of upgrades. Accessibility is a practice of your is practice of making your website, system, or application usable to as many people as possible. Accessibility is an essential aspect of learning management system and should be taken into account throughout your website design process. Accessible websites use various input and output channels to convey information such as audio and vision, and to provide extra engagement options beyond just a standard point and click interface in the form of keyboard-based navigation and text-to-speech conversion. Talking about the history, in the past, the World Wide Web Consortium issued web content accessibility guidelines. At the same time, Microsoft launched an on-screen keyboard and the option to translate text to speech for low vision and blind users. Looking okay, at the rules that Sakai follows, it is mandated that the designers adopt a user centric mentality in order to adhere to numerous online accessibility regulations imposed by web content accessibility guidelines. Otherwise, your website, your institutional reputation, and your revenue are all at stake. Aside from that, non-compliance might lead to legal action. When building an LMS, it is required to follow these guidelines and fall under one of these conformance levels, which are A, AA, and AAA. Sakai is developed to meet these design principles found in recognized international standards. Sakai follows web content accessibility guidelines of version 2.0, satisfying both level A and AA success criteria. We also use emerging standards and best practice design techniques that support existing and emerging adaptive technologies. What is VPAC? It is a voluntary product accessibility template. It is a document that explains how information and communication technology products and services support the documentation required to meet the standards required for IT accessibility. To help you with a better understanding, think of VPAT as a sort of a nutrition facts label for your LMS website or a, even a, a digital product or service. But when you check for a nutrition facts label, it gives you a sense of impact a given snack will have on your body. In a similar manner, Checking for VPAD rules gives you a potential, gives your potential customers a sense of impact your accessibility website might have on your customers. And our Sakai community wants its Sakai accessibility working group to meet the goal of obtaining certification from VPAD as a VPAD based review, which provides an assurance to your LMS websites. The Sakai community follows four guidelines, and these make our LMS perceivable, operable, 
understandable and robust. Few barriers. What if you ignore accessibility, failing to address the requirements of handicapped individuals and non-compliance with the legislation can result in penalties, costly settlements, as well as loss of clients, or even rebuilding your website in case of inability to serve a worldwide audience. The most immediate threat is a lawsuit brought by a disabled child or an individual who claims that they don't have sufficient access to the LMS content. Two barriers to be discussed are, we all know technology can enhance the user experience, but at the same time, it can also create unintentional barriers for some users. As a few examples related to these technological barriers are electronic documents uh, without accessibility features like text and screen readers. Also, attitudinal barriers is a, an, as another example that discriminate against people with disabilities. These barriers rise due to the lack of understanding, which can lead people to judge or ignore a person with disabilities. Using color as the only means of communication is another example where users with blind vision or color blindness will be excluded if the content is communicated only by color. This could lead to a confusion where people will have no idea where to search to repair the problem. Let me provide a simple illustration on how a web accessible link should look like. The picture here shows the links that can be read as learn more, or it could be something even like read more or click more. Click here, which are not a good examples of an accessible link, a good accessible link for non-sighted people. Because people who use screen readers browse a page by looking at the headlines and links as they advance through the site. And if a user wants to jump to a random link, like Usually they use the tap key. So if they want to jump to a random link by using the tap key, if a screen reader reads the link as learn more, the user will be confused with learn more what? The user couldn't understand the link's purpose. So suggestions for better links could be something like this. As you can see, the link can be read as learn more articles web accessibility topics or even something like headings and accessibility, etc. So these are some of the problems faced by faculty and students in general LMS websites. I could show you another example of what a website shouldn't look like. The above image displays an uncoordinated background color choices. The text is broken and not well placed. It lacks a professional look and feels like no design is included in it. So we have learned and understood why accessibility is important in building any website and what are the guidelines to be followed. Now let's understand why it is even more important to have accessibility in learning management system. Let's talk numbers. According to WHO, it is said that about 15% of global population is living with a disability, about 10% of students across the world, and nearly about 7 million students in America having a disability. The most common disability in US being learning visual deficit and visual deficit being the most common type. Sakai has been performing accessibility for many years. Initially, there was limited amount of testing performed by other members of the Sakai community. Institutions would even involve students with disabilities to do accessibility testing on their local instances of Sakai. But this was highly dependent on the schools being able to identify students with disabilities, and it is hard to fill in the positions of students who are graduated. So there was a change. Later in the years, accessibility has been extensively worked on after Chris Knapp was embedded as a part of Sakai QA team. Chris followed a method of adapting a testing script used by other members of Sakai QA team 
to create Sakai Accessibility Regression Test Script, which was used for performing keyboard and screen reader testing. Through Dr. Chuck's long-time partnership, VisionAid, an Indian-based organization, helped with testing, which allowed to add several more combinations of screen readers and web browsers to the testing. Over the first year of involvement of Chris, he built upon accessibility regression test script consisting approximately of 380 unique test cases for all those tools mentioned in which the grading is the major component. So let's understand the importance of LMS being accessible to all students has always been there. And since the pandemic, we have been and still being through increased its importance more than ever. The team regularly uses blind and low vision users to accomplish accessibility testing. While the QA team continue to improve our testing abilities, yet we are exposed to another essential part of uh, Sakai's continuous QA and testing effort called as Sakai Accessibility Lite. So our process started off by having Zoom uh, meetings and email conversations with Chris. It was explained to us that non-sighted users and testers use screen reader for testing. Screen reader being a software that enables blind or visually impaired user to read the text that is displayed on the computer screen. Screen readers are usually expensive. And JAWS and NVDA are the screen readers used in Sakai testing. So let's go through how we as sighted testers have a distinctive perspective on accessibility testing. Understanding how we adapted. It's an often asked question to all of us being sighted testers. How is it? Was it difficult? How hard was it? And I would say in the beginning, it is somewhat difficult as it was assigned to us using keyboard, which did not involve any screen, read, screen reader software. As keyboard is something we always work with, but the tough part is finding the navigation. And it is natural as a QA to uh, like, you know, slightly deviate from the test script and be able to test around other functions. And I'm pretty sure every QA right now is nodding. <laughs> so let's take an example. While testing how to release an assessment using tests and quizzes too, there are multiple options for a faculty member to select. And imagine a non-sighted tester performing all these test cases using a screen reader. Let's see this example to understand more. If a non-sighted tester have to perform Uh, if an on-sighted tester have to perform a test for tests and quizzes for adding extra credit, the screen reader first will read out the content from the test case, that is from the test script, and now the non-sighted tester have to move on. Image link on the page right from the Sakai logo, as you see. Now, if the same non-sighted tester should open a JIRA related to this tool, they return to this again, uh, this testing site again. This process is repeated all over again for every tool and it's every function by a non-sighted tester. Just like how we discussed about tools and different functions before, these are the different settings a faculty member has to set up before publishing an assessment. So again, let's all of us imagine a non-sighted tester performing tests of these functions. For a non-sighted tester to test the due date and the screen reader to reach to that point in this screen will take about 2 minutes 37 seconds. And similarly, for the tester to get to the feedback settings, it would take about 1 minute 12 seconds. And to get to the background color, which is at the very bottom, if you could see, it takes about 1 minute 28 seconds. So this is the experience a non-sighted tester goes through. Do you now feel the empathy for the end user who is visually impaired? The importance of sighted testers 
being performed um the testing being performed by the blind or low vision testers consume more time and um uh, it uh, being like a non sighted uh, being a sighted tester is a preliminary accessibility check could be done in a fraction of time and um, it is that like you know we are uh, we are already doing a preliminary check so that the non sighted testers could exactly test the test cases they need to go back and test it using a screen reader so if you uh, we did a test run and uh, we can say that about 50% less time is consumed by a sighted tester overall this is a standard example sakai community is doing and most important thing is the knowledge that has occurred across the open source community and the experience we have learned and have a sense of empathy for those individuals with disabilities who must rely on assistive technology to native this web so it is these unique experiences that produce better qa testers and why as a sakai community will continue to get better and better at accessibility the most crucial and consistent notion while performing accessibility testing was to put ourselves in the shoes of the non sighted and visually impaired people and being able to relate to them overall our work within the sakai community being part of the qa team and accessibility team has been a journey that we will always refer to as a guide for our personal learning experiences we are super excited to be part of more creative innovative work with the community and it is our sincere request that when possible all available resources contribute to the QA and accessibility as well as accessibility light testing to the end please join us on mondays at 3 pm for accessibility meeting thank you please feel free to ask any questions